My top three survival tips. I spend a lot of time out in the woods. Usually, I'm in a place I'm not familiar with. I have a set of core beliefs that have kept me alive in many situations. There's a lot of bad advice out there. The internet has spawned lots of survival experts who operate out of their backyard, which brings me to my most important survival tip. Go outside. Go outside and look around. Take the information you've learned online and practice doing what you've learned. Try building a fire or a shelter or making twine or practice purifying water. All the things you've learned by watching videos are great. They're also useless if you've never tried them. How hard is it really to make a fire with a fire drill? The answer is it's really hard if you've never done it. And judging from how much time is taken in most survival shows to get a fire going in this manner, even experts know it's not a reliable method if it's raining or been raining or it's really windy. My point is conditions will never be ideal for you to implement all the survival techniques you're learning. I'm not discouraging you from learning all you can before an emergency situation arises. I'm encouraging you to try these survival techniques beforehand because life will throw you curveballs. It will rain or be windy when you're dying for a fire. Don't die. Practice beforehand. Go to a park and build a fire in a barbecue grill or find a campfire ring and get started practicing. I'm zooming in on your ability to make a fire because it's the most important survival skill. Why? Well, Without a fire, you could be facing hypothermia. Aside from falling off a cliff, it's the quickest way to die in the forest. Hypothermia happens in mild weather if you don't have shelter. People die of hypothermia. People die of hypothermia when temperatures are above freezing. They think they can just sit down and rest a while while they figure out what to do next. The problem is hypothermia impairs your judgment and you don't realize what a bad idea sitting down to rest is when you need to move to generate body heat. Taking a short nap could easily lead to death. Gathering firewood and attempting to build a fire is an activity that will generate body heat. Using a bow drill to start a fire will generate tons of body heat. Even better, do what I do before entering the forest. Make sure you have two lighters and a knife. Why? In case one lighter fails, you have a backup. You can make it for weeks with two lighters. Start a thousand fires. And the knife is for the thousand times it will come in handy to cut things. If you don't have a knife, cutting things is nearly impossible. Stone tools won't cut it unless you practice with them before an emergency. So whatever survival gear you might want to have ready for an unseen circumstance, a knife and two lighters are essentials. My third most important survival tip is don't ever give up. I've heard of two people who could have survived but gave up. One survived anyway. The first was a deer hunter who was climbing on a rocky ledge in a remote part of Appalachia when the rocks gave way and fell on him, crushing his legs and trapping him upside down. He couldn't move and was in terrible pain he could shoot his rifle, which he did in groups of three shots, which is a universal signal for I need help. When he got no response, he thought no one had heard his cry for help. He used his last bullet to shoot himself. I know two people who were hunting in the area and heard the shots. They were trying to locate him when they heard the final shot. So, don't ever give up. The second guy was a hunter in a tree stand who fell. He was injured, but was hanging from a safety harness. He cut the strap and fell to the ground where he broke his leg. From there, he tried to crawl to safety, but it was a long way, and he managed to crawl over a fire ant hill. Ouch! Then he decided it was too painful to go on living, and got his knife out and cut his wrist. But that plan failed, because it hurts to cut yourself, so he didn't bleed to death. He was lying out in the woods hoping to die when some other hunters found him. He lived, but he had a very bad, embarrassing day. It would have been better to
to decide. He'd per persevere in the face of adversity, which you can do right now. Decide right now that you'll give yourself every opportunity to go on living, even if that means broken legs or fire ants or other temporary forms of pain. The will to live is a factor in every life-threatening emergency. Make sure yours is switched on. Don't die unless you must. So my top survival tips are really simple. They've kept me alive, and a few of my adventures could have easily led to my death. Let's review. Number one, practice before an emergency. You don't know how to do stuff by watching or by reading info on survival. You know how to do it when you've actually done it. Get outside and practice. Practice building a fire. Get good at it before a survival situation tests you. If you fail that test, you could die. Number two, if you are heading outside, carry two lighters and a knife. This takes most of the drama out of any survival situation. If you can start a fire quickly, you can warm up, cook, and have light when darkness falls. You need a reliable source of fire. You need two lighters. Number three, don't ever give up. The will to live is a determining factor in most emergencies. Decide now that you're not going to ever lie down and die. It will serve you well the rest of your life. If you watch my videos, you'll see I'm not scared of the woods. I go out alone, way out for long periods. I don't see the forest as a dangerous place because I know what I'm doing. If you were to drop me into the ghetto, I would be in far more danger, not knowing what to avoid or where to find safety. But because I've spent so much time in nature, I know what to avoid and where to find safety when I'm there. Some people want to paint the forest as full of dangers. Woodsmen have done this for centuries, telling tall tales to the newcomers for their amusement. This kind of stuff makes me mad because I had it done to me as a kid. First off, why do people tell scary stories around a campfire? That's dumb. It fills a kid's head with fear. And then they tell them, oh, go sleep in the woods. <laughs> Snipes hunts, what kind of crap is that? And wood lore that's demonstrably false, such as you must wait half an hour after eating before swimming, or you can catch a bird by sprinkling salt on its tail. Never go out alone is another piece of advice that's overrated. I've done it all my life. So did Colin Fletcher, the father of modern backpacking. Solitude and a deep connection with nature go hand in hand. So if you have someone telling you you shouldn't go out alone, they don't know about this connection and should be pitied. A hundred years ago, lumbermen believed that if a horse broke through the ice while hauling logs, the best thing to do was to release their harness so they could sink. Once they sank, They'd supposedly balloon up and float back to the surface where they could be rescued. Except it doesn't work. They drown. So it's bad advice. I know of one historical account where a teamster followed that advice, lost his prize horses under the ice, and was consequently fired. So Widsman didn't share accurate accounts of the forests because they wanted to trip up newcomers. Hollywood doesn't share accurate accounts of the forest because the forest is much more exciting if they portray it as full of dangers. So they do. Are there dangers? Yes. Are they a threat to an informed, experienced woodman? Sometimes. But that's half the fun. Going where man is not in charge of everything is an experience of freedom that I refuse to live without. I hope you know this already, but if not, take my advice and get outside to practice the techniques you've learned. Let's hope you never have to use them, but if you do, it's likely you'll survive.